Uh, let's talk about this with Deputy Leader of Reform UK, David Ball is with us. David, afternoon to you. Hello, very good afternoon to you, Ian. Very nice to see you. It must be for you. Um, listen, <laughs> it's always good, always good to have you on, David. Uh, listen, um, I, I mean, look, every political campaign, you get these stories once in a while that crop up, you know, they've or they've uncovered some tweets of somebody from years ago. You know, the Tories have had their fair share of this and Labour have had some of this. Um, I, I think the Labour candidate in Clacton, by the way, which I think Nigel uh, Farage mentioned yesterday, um, and also, you know, talked about his favourite drink being white man's tears. I think that's a fairly awful thing to say as well. Um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, David, but I've got a funny feeling like Isabel and others, you would completely condemn the words that this, uh, this former, now former canvasser for reform was using. Yeah, 100%. You know me very well. Look, I will not tolerate anyone who's homophobic or anti-Semitic or incitement to violence or if they are racist in any way. And that, it, that goes for Niger and for Richard. And the minute we find that out, they are out of the party. Let's make this really clear, because this man was a volunteer for the party. And like many political parties, people turn up, they deliver leaflets. We don't actually vet those people because they've come there to help the party. But Isabel was interviewed earlier on Talk, and this story has moved on significantly since then. So Andrew Parker is an actor, OK? We are now in the process of working out, did he put on a fake accent? Was he playing a role? We have put it through AI. There is a 99.9% .9 confidence that this is him, and I believe that he has now said that this is him and yeah. that he's an actor. When you compare the voices, the voice he speaks with on his showreel when he's looking for work is a completely different accent to the one that he's using on the doorstep with that terrible inflammatory language. And Nigel has just been on uh, a different programme. He has said he is now convinced this is a setup, that this man did this deliberately as an actor to infiltrate Reform UK and to paint us in a bad light. Now, the, then, then the question becomes, did he do that of his own volition or was that set up by the production company or indeed Channel 4? Now, Channel 4 is denying any wrongdoing in this, but there are huge issues here and it needs to be referred to Elcom if that is the case. Yeah, well, listen, um, I, I mean, if that is the case, uh, then firstly, Channel 4 News would cease to exist. I mean, they, that would be it. They'd be finitoed. So I think in your heart, David, love you to bits. I think you know that isn't the case. The Channel 4 haven't set somebody up it, and scripted it. I don't know that. I don't know that because these production companies make programmes for the, for the network. The way Channel 4 works, as you know, it's a commissioning hub and they commission independent production companies. Now, if that is the case, and if they have chosen someone who is an actor to infiltrate the party, that is manipulation of an election. And that carries a prison sentence. Indeed. Well, let me tell you what they say. A spokesman for Channel 4 says, we strongly stand by our rigorous and duly impartial journalism, which speaks for itself. We met Mr Parker for the first time at a Reform UK Party headquarters, where he was a Reform Party canvasser. We did not pay the Reform UK canvasser or anyone else in this report. Mr Parker was not known to Channel 4 and was filmed covertly via the undercover operation. Now, if he's lying about that, or if he's putting on a voice either in the film or on his showreel, whatever way round it is. I mean, he, he's pretty good, an actor. And by the way, I don't think if you look at I don't think he's really an actor, David, is he? He's a bloke that's on, a, you know, the, yeah. the books of an extra agency. No, he is an actor. And well, actually, he calls himself an actor, but well, I don't... I mean, he, he says he's been in lots of movies. He says he's been in various... Um, dramas on network television that makes him an actor in my well, yeah opinion. but i think there's a difference between but people you who you know work in tesco and do uh, and, and do a, a kind of you know they're on the books of an extra agency loads of people do that Ian, if, if you talk in a completely different accent normally yeah and then you're canvassing and you say all right this is what i think in this kind of put on voice then you are acting you are behaving in a role and the reason that this is happening is because people are so frightened of the groundswell of opinion for Reform UK. As you know, we are polling at 18, 19, 20%. So we've overtaken the Conservatives. There are forces at work that do not want Reform UK to do well. And that's what we're up against. Do you think, though, so is, is the smart money from what you're saying, David, on the fact that he is the infiltrator, he himself, that, and we have to be careful because he would deny all of this, but he is the one that would have known that he's going to go out canvassing on the same day that Channel 4 were out filming. 
Uh, was the accent that he put on, was that his real voice? It sounded like a bloke's real voice, but as you say, people can do all sorts. And he put on a voice on his show reel. It's no. hard to tell. You know, was he, you know, doing a show reel or was he doing the kind of mockney thing that, you know, I'm sure you and I have done it when you get out of a cab, you go, thank you, Governor. Um, even though it's not how you would spit, I don't know what he was. So, so what, which one uh, is it here? What do you think which uh, we're dealing with here, David? Well, well, let's just take this step by step. We're now analysing that video, and when and we, I already have the video where we juxtapose his normal speaking voice, and we then put it next to the voice that he used when he was canvassing. They're entirely different. They're entirely different, and that then begs loads of questions. And you are right to ask those questions. Did he do it of his own volition? Was he set up to do it by the production company? Did Channel Four know? But the whole thing stinks to me. The timing of this stinks. And actually, uh, Nigel made a really good point about this, which is why is everyone deep diving into Reform UK? Look, we're held together by volunteers and there are some brilliant volunteers yeah. and we have some bad apples. And when you get bad apples, they're thrown out. And you know me well enough to know I will not tolerate any of this and neither I will not. Agree. And I made, I made that point before you came on, David, that I think actually Reform UK have been faster and quicker and, 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 and more urgently removed bad apples. I think when you're a new party and people are throwing themselves in, Actually, I think your task of trying to winkle people out is even harder than established parties. We saw the Tories drag their heels on betting. We've seen Labour drag their heels on anti-Semitism. And actually, Reform UK have been pretty swift. And I think this is another example. The curveball came when this sort of actor thing crept in, which the allegations here, just to go over the, the headline, really, David, is that Channel 4... I don't know whether an independent production company would have made that or whether Channel 4 it was, just... It was an independent... Who, who were out there doing, you know, with independent production That's company right, or an exactly. independent freelance. I don't know, whichever one it is. Whoever it is would never work again. The actor would have been... I, I mean, it, it takes a special kind of person to be public law, bearing in mind, according to the allegation here, he knew he was being filmed and he was putting on a voice, but he was happy to use that language. I mean, that's a that in itself is a curious position to be in as an actor, isn't it? I can only give you the facts, and those are the facts as they stand. And obviously this is an ongoing legal matter. We've instructed uh, lawyers now to look into this, and there are some big questions to be answered by the independent production company and by Channel 4 itself. And actually what this says is that if there has been electoral interference, that is a very grave move. And if Channel 4 is complicit in any way, and if they knew something before this and then they broadcast it, then, as you rightly say, Channel 4 is in serious trouble. This Huge. is a legal matter. That would be a, a fine of hundreds of thousands of pounds from the uh, the, 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 the Ofcom characters. Uh, but also, I would imagine, as a news organisation, the news side, at the very least, would have to fold. I don't know whether they would want to take that risk. I guess just in closing, David... Um, this man is no longer, or whatever he was before, uh, I mean, there is an image volunteer. of him saying he was a volunteer for the party. So do we acknowledge that whilst he claims to be an actor, to what degree or how busy he was is another story, but he was officially a volunteer for Reform UK? Well, he pitched up and he delivered leaflets, so that makes him a volunteer. You know, he said he knew Nigel. He'd met Nigel once, as far as we can understand. Lots of people meet Nigel every single day. He's the most prominent politician in this country. And actually, I, I just think the whole thing is a very tawdry and sorry affair. But make no mistake about it, Reform UK is rising in the polls and it doesn't matter who throws what at us, we intend to, and to triumph. Is this a little... I mean, you've been accused of going a bit Trumpian on this, you know, slaughter the mainstream media, get people on side the establishment are against you nigel has fought all of his life of course against institutions and stereotypes and all the rest of it the coots bank debacle is one example over there in holland when the free speech conference was going on and you know they tried to shut it down while nigel was he he's he, he's been there the party you know your party because you are different and you are, to those people that support you, adventurous and spot on, etc. But what comes with that, of course, is, you know, criticism along the way. Suggestion here is that what you're doing is playing the kind of Trump card, blaming the mainstream media. It's yet another attack on our party. Poor us, because we're doing well and the mainstream media hate us. And that plays well with some people, as you know.
Ian, that is complete rubbish. As you know, we've been fighting really hard to get mainstream media coverage of our campaign. And the way that the system works, as you know, it depends on your results from the last two elections. So obviously, if you didn't stand in those elections, you don't get the airtime. That is why we are doing these huge events around the country. That is why thousands of people are turning up. That is why we are live streaming all these events, because we need to get the message out about Reform UK. And actually, under First Past the Post, it is incredibly difficult for a small insertion party to do well and I have to pay credit to talk TV because they do cover us because they are not afraid of the truth of what is going on there but I cannot say the same about the BBC and about ITV and indeed Channel 4